how to create extensions. You click on extensions in trunk and then you go to the subcategory extensions. From here, you can cl click the plus sign and add a, either a bulk extensions or a single extensions. We're going to do bulk, so we're going to click on batch here, which is the method, and what kind of extension we're using SIP. So for the most part, you'll always make a SIP extension. If you need to connect like a fax machine or an analog device, you would make an FXS extension. IAX is another type of extension that we don't use here very often, so I'm not going to go through that. How many extensions do we want to create? In this case, I am going to make 101. Oh, I can only make 100. And based on our diagram, we're going to go 1,200 to 1,300 for our extension numbers. I'm going to start at 1201, and I'm going to go 100 extensions. That'll get me to 1300. Extension incrementation is one, which means you get 1201, 1202. You can jump by twos or threes or fours or even fives if you want to leave gaps between, um, or you can make them one at a time. Permission level, everybody's going to have permission to call out. 10-digit numbers or 11-digit numbers, but not internationally. So we're going to give everybody national rights. All of these extensions are not going to have voicemail, so I'm going to disable voicemail. But I want Keep Alive turned on, so I'm going to check that box. Keep Alive to make sure the extension and the phone are talking to each other regularly. If you were making a lot of virtual extensions, you wouldn't turn that on. But I find this, this helps keep, keep BLF lights active, and keep registration constant, um, prevents drops, things like that. You can change color ID number, you can set a SIP password. Um, if you hover over though, you'll see that R means random. So it's going to create a random password for everybody, and that's what we want. And then E here means use the extension as the caller ID number. Now there will be another place we'll do caller ID, so leave that alone. So this is, this is it. That's all you really need to set, and you can just hit save, and it will create all 100 extensions. You can go through and modify you know, codecs and faxing stuff and other, other settings that we're not going to mess with, unconditional call forwards. You can do all that right from the get-go here in the batch creation, but you don't need to. You can, you can customize that individually as you need to. So I'm going to hit save here. It tells me what it's going to create. I'm going to let it create it. Now, 100 extensions is quite a bit, so it takes a moment to create them all. And voila. Now, I said 1,200, so we're going to create one more. And it's going to be a single extension, and it's going to be 1,200. It's going to have national rights, only this one's going to have voicemail. And you can see here, it even shows you the SIP password when you're only making one. And it shows you the voicemail password because you're only making one. We'll set this to 2018, today, this, the current year. We're going to skip voicemail password verification because whenever this phone checks its own voicemail, I don't want it to have to punch in its password. We trust everybody on the site, so we're going to do that. If you don't, don't check this box because then they have to type in the password every time. I still want my Keep Alive's turned on. And you can tell here we have a few more options of settings available to us when we're making just one extension at a time. The auth ID is um, often identical to the extension number. Uh, it's the SIP user ID. If you want a different auth ID than SIP user ID, you can type that in here. Um, and you can use two different numbers, so to speak, or even letters. Um, but if you leave it blank, the auth ID is the same as the extension number. That's new. We'll look at that right now. All right, emergency calls caller ID. So when you call out, if you want to change the number that it uses as caller ID for emergency calls, you can put that in here. If you don't want the extension active, you can disable it here. We can punch in names. We'll start with mine. And my email address. Oh, I want to do the autofill.
There's my email, send me an email. The user password is for logging in as yourself. Um, right now we're logged into the admin portal or to the UCM's portal using the admin login. If we logged in as 1200, we'd use this password here. After you click save here, this password disappears and the only way to change it is to completely replace it. You can never actually find out what that password is. If you have more than one extension that you want to, or more than one physical phone or soft phone that you want to connect to this extension, you'll want to change the concurrent registrations to be a higher number than one. Right now, only one device can register as, as this extension. So we'll go ahead and save that one. And boom, we have 1200 and then 1201 all the way through four whole pages of all of the numbers. The greatest per page you can get to is 40. And you can flip through page two and page three all the way up to our 1300 mark. 101 extensions. If you register them, they will show up here as, as registered rather than unavailable, but we won't uh, mess with that right now. Now, these extensions are in here, but I can't use them until I start to hit, until I hit apply changes. So we're going to apply those changes and make all of those available. Now, what about follow me settings? <clears throat> what does that mean? Uh, we looked at all the, uh, on, our, on our diagram here, um, different extensions use different things. And sometimes we can have an extension ring and then follow me to a cell phone. So it rings the extension, it rings the cell phone. And I thought I had written one in here. I didn't. I didn't write one in here, but I did put it on this diagram. Extensions, voicemails, and follow me settings. So if we were full, sending a call directly to an extension, then the follow me setting would follow that phone if it didn't ring to its cell phone destination. And then if you didn't act around the cell phone, it would come back and leave a voicemail on the system. So we're going to start by looking at extension 1200. We're going to edit it. And at the top here, you see we have more tabs now. And you can see the all of the passwords are grayed out. So you can't just see them. But the voicemail and the SIP password, you can see if you need to. But this one down here, there's no seeing it. You'll never get to know what that is again unless you just reset it. Now, if you have this extension, it's active and it's got voicemail enabled, you can go all the way to the last tab to follow me settings. And you can turn that on. So that means that this phone extension will now ring the regular extension at the phone for the allotted amount of time. If there is no answer on that phone, it will jump to the following numbers that we list down here. And it will ring that extension, that, that cell phone or landline, whatever you want to forward it to, another, another desk phone. Upon ringing, if you have this box checked here, confirm when answering, the person that picks up the call will hear you have a call being forwarded from your extension from whatever number. And it will ask you to accept this call, press one. Deny this call, press two. I'm not sure if one and two are the right options, but it asks you to confirm it. And as long as you have that confirm when answering on, the system will send it back to its, an, an, its voicemail or to this default destination if nobody picks up and confirms the call. If you uncheck this and you're sending it to a cell phone and the cell phone doesn't pick up an answer, It'll go to the voicemail and they will get the voicemail of the cell phone. If you check this, it doesn't go to the voicemail of the cell phone. It comes back to this default destination. All right. What do you want them to hear when they're waiting for the call? You can recreate a custom music on hold, like your call is being forwarded and we're looking for the person and, and that's all fine. Or you can just give them a ring. And that's what that does. Skip trunk authorization. If you have a trunk that requires authorization to use, like a password, you can tell it to skip that by checking this box. Otherwise, uh, you'll need to get that password in there. Uh, for what we're doing, we're not using passwords, so we'll ignore that. 
use the Collie's DOD for following. DOD is direct outward down. This is the caller ID that the extension gets. So if I assign an extension to 1200 and check this box, it's going to use the caller ID I've assigned to 1200 when it forwards that call on. If I don't, it'll pass the caller ID of the original caller through to the cell phone. Enable destination, we're going to go to the voicemail of 1200. So it's going to try to ring through. It's going to demand the confirmation when answering. And if it doesn't get it, it's going to end at the voicemail of this. So the first following number will be an external number. We'll do 4321. That's my external number. It's going to ring it for 30 seconds and then end at the default destination. If I want, I have to add that. If I want, I can add another one. Ooh. Five, 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 four, three, two. It's going to ring that one for 30 seconds. And it'll go as long as you want it to go and then dump back to the voicemail. We'll just do the one. And that's how a follow me works. Once that is in place, any time extension 1200 is called directly, it will obey that rule. And if it's in a ring group, it'll ignore it. It's only directly dialed calls that, that honor the following you say. So that's how you set up extensions and set up voicemail and set up following. Again, voicemail is just this button right here. Um, remote voicemail is another option. That's if you want another system to handle voicemail settings, which we're not going to mess with today. Once you have extensions and voicemails and your follow me settings set up, we move on to the next section of Ring Group.